some great information. I think you're going to really, really like this one. We had a lot of interest in learning more about local service ads, big part of, uh, of, of the marketing mix that carpet cleaners and home service providers should be looking at. So we're going to kind of dive deep into that, how to make sure you do it properly and that kind of stuff. So welcome to the carpet cleaner success podcast, a show created to inspire carpet cleaning business owners to build their own thriving residential and commercial cleaning business. Your host, John Clendenning has built and sold successful cleaning businesses for multiple six figures over his 30 year career and is the founder of carpet cleaner marketing masters. A digital agency that turns your online marketing into a lead generation machine. Tune in as John shares proven tips, strategies, and expert interviews to help fast track your success in the carpet cleaning industry. The, the interesting thing about this, this is really, um, really interesting webinar. Um, something I, I find very, very impactful for our clients. Um, it's something that as a digital marketing agency, um, we don't make any money on at all. This is just, um, there's no services around this that we can really provide to you a little bit here and there as part of, a, you know, our main core package and stuff like that to help you guys get set up. But other than that, this is literally just something that as a business owner, you need to know how to do, you need to how to, how to manage and see if it fits into your model. So, so that's what I want to share with you today is all about how to win with Google local service ads because they're, they're still fairly new and a lot of people aren't quite sure how to, how to go about using them properly to actually maximize the results. And right now, um, way back in the day, like you go back 15, 20 years ago, um, Google pay-per-click ads were pennies a click. Now we know they're five, 10, 15, 20, some markets $25 a click for every, every click that just comes through to your landing page or website. And that, you know, how many clicks do you need before you get, generate a phone call? And how many phone calls do you need before you generate a, a job out of it? You've really gotta be careful and aware of the math because the bidding has gone insane. Well, Google local service ads are still just sort of like, you know, um, the new kid on the block, so to speak. and the, the cost for the per lead can work out in a lot of businesses if you run the math correctly. So we're going to be talking about that here today. So I need your attention. Turn off your cell phones. I'm actually going to turn and put mine on mute right now. I'm actually going to try and prevent my uh, Siri from talking to me on my phone as well, which sometimes happens during these. Turn off your Facebook. Um, you know, if you're a cleaning or service business owner and you're serious about getting better results from your marketing, the next is 60, 90 minutes. I don't think it's going to take that long. We're going to walk through this pretty quickly. Um, 45 to 60 minutes, um, as it says, could change your life. It it's definitely could um, could really, really impact your marketing. And and that's the important point here is to is to is to really see how we can uh, um, help grow your business and give you some actionable advice. Again, that is not something that we even can provide as a necessary as a service. It's something you guys have to do um, and work on, you know, on your own about as well. So. Um, what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to cover is what are Google local service ads? We're going to let you know what they are. Where are they active? How do you get involved with them? How do they work? How can you jump on board if you're not already? And if you are on board already, um, what you can do to really, really, um, maximize your results and get the best chance of ranking because we're going to talk about there's only three results that show up and Google decides those three results. It's all part of Google's algorithm still. That's Google, everything Google does is all about an algorithm, as you guys know, and how do you influence that? Um, that's the really important part. Um, and how do you take advantage of, of these high quality leads at a low cost per lead so you can maximize your ROI? So if that sounds exciting, if that sounds like what you're looking to do is, hey, I need a lead source and I need another lead source. I need multiple lead sources. Can I employ this one in my business as another lead source that, that's valuable to me? And if I can, how do I maximize it? How do I use this tool properly? So for those of you who don't know me, I know we've got some customers on, like some of our regular clients on the line. Um, we've got people that I've talked to before, uh, but there's uh, some newbies jumping on the line as well. So who am I? Uh, well, uh, so name is John Clendenning. I've been in the cleaning industry since 1990 while still in high school. Um, I've been the owner of many, many um, cleaning businesses, service businesses, um, franchises. I've also even got an e-com line on Amazon. I've done, I do SEO and marketing all, all over the place, but my near and dear to my heart is the cleaning industry and carpet cleaning business specifically. Um, I've lectured around the world, many three-day 
um, elite retreats and, and 90 minutes on a stage and all of that kind of stuff, Vegas and Chilliwack, BC and um, Miami and the island of Samoa I got flown into, things like that. So I've been a long time consultant and speaker, trainer, author, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I bought, systemized, and sold, made franchise businesses during the years. The whole time through that period of time, from 1995 until just uh, just last year, uh, I had my brick and mortar carpet um, upholstery and um, cleaning business. We also had duck cleaning businesses and added the tile and grout and stuff like that. And I was able to sell that during the pandemic and cash out really, really nicely. I'm also the author, I'm proud to announce, of the Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Carpet Cleaners. You can go find it up on Amazon. It's, it's available. Um, Kindle version and the the uh, printed book. It, it'll arrive to your door in about two to three days. Um, if you go order it from there, it's just a new release, something I've been working on for a very long time. But it is a literally a step by step program of everything you need to do to um, for internet marketing for carpet cleaners. It literally is the complete guide based on case studies, our clients, all the work we've done, the 20 years of experience in in marketing, the 15 or so experience uh, years of experience in digital marketing and our entire team. So that's a, that's a good resource to grab um, uh, as well and to have sort of in your back pocket. More importantly than that, what about what we do for our clients? So there's just a, a, a bunch of happy clients um, getting their best months ever, their best years ever, um, ranking number one, showing up everywhere online in their local marketplace, dominating everywhere, which is what we want to do. What we call it is our as our digital dominance method. And it's it's based on, again, my 30 plus years of experience, 15, 20 years of consulting, and everything I've done to build my own businesses, to help build franchise networks, to help build individual companies, help them grow and understand it's an all-in mentality. It's not a one and done. You can't just be doing one thing. It's all about how you put all the pieces together to build a momentum and a machine that is just generating leads and cash and a business that you're, it's not all based on being the lowest price or any one advertising source. It's firing on all cylinders. So if one thing kind of goes down for a little bit, you got 20 other sources of leads coming in anyways. And that's how you grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And you have an asset that you can sell not just a lead source, um, uh, you're not just paying for leads all the time. So we are going to be talking about, you know, pay for lead today, but what we're going to be, what we, we always share at our company is that's just one of many ways of, of getting leads into your business. So what we do um, is we market our clients as the top cleaning brand in their marketplace so they can attract the best clients, are able to chop, charge the top rates, and are booked out for weeks in advance. Um, our core principles are all around maximizing your opportunities um, to generate leads from your digital marketing. So Google local service ad is an opportunity. So is Google My Business. So is Google Pay Per Click. So is your website. So is Facebook ads. So is social media. All of these things are opportunities. The goal is to maximize all of your opportunities because it's a, it's it growing a business is about is about doing all of those kinds of things and how do you implement that and how do you automate it so it's not like a pain in the butt it's actually gets easier the bigger you grow um, you want to maximize your brand impression so we always talk about the brand authority and visibility you want to be maximizing your brand impressions in your marketplace so you're seen everywhere as the authority as the one people should call so are you maximizing your brand impressions everywhere you can and then you want to maximize conversions I like to call those lead multipliers so if you've got people coming to your website and you maximize the website for conversions you're multiplying the effect of every single visitor that comes to your website if you've got um, pay-per-click running and you maximize the conversions on your landing page, you maximize the words on the page, you maximize the offer, you're maximizing everything for conversions and now you're multiplying the efforts and the effects of the marketing that you are currently running and that that the maximize the conversions you do it once and it continuously maximizes that that vehicle so you just constantly thinking of how do I maximize my conversions on every sort of thing. How do you maximize your conversions on referrals? How do you maximize your conversions on repeats? How do you maximize your conversions on landing strategic partners locally? Everything is about maximizing conversions and that's that's a lead multiplier. So today what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about what are Google local service ads. Um, so I've heard this story and I, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it, it kind of makes sense to me. But so Google local service ads are these 
Um, these are called, um, they're, they're, they're pay per lead ads. So you don't pay per click. Right below it down here is the pay per click. Every time somebody clicks on one of these ads, you're paying. Google local service ads are pay per lead. So we know other lead sources like HomeAdvisor and Thumbtack and um, you know Bark and a number of these places that want to sell you the lead, right? So the story that I have heard is that you know you know somewhere along the way Google was watching these companies like like HomeAdvisor and Angie's List and Yelp and Thumbtack and all this rank in the organic algorithms, pay for ads in the paid algorithms, so that they could generate leads in all of these different spaces, carpet cleaning, roofing, you know, um, locks, uh, locksmiths, plumbing, you name it, all those different categories of local services. Um, they were watching these companies use their platform, generate leads into their, their own platform, these other companies, and then sell the leads that they were generating back to businesses. And Google went, well, wow, isn't that a great idea? Not only can we do that, we can do that better, and we own the, the we own the, the the sandbox, as I say. We can put it right up at the top. So, um, pay per lead is visible right at the top of the search in those marketplaces that have pay per lead turned on, like in those marketplaces that Google is 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 a, is providing this. So, if the marketplace is way too small, you'll notice it's not there. If it's a decent sized market, um, they know that they can sell this stuff they have it turned on because there are people looking for these services. The interesting thing is different than other lead sources. Think of it this way. This is a person on the phone and that is insanely different. So when somebody like, again, you notice they only show three um, before you have to click this more tab that very few people click. So they've got the, the top three. Well, when you, when somebody clicks on, it, I'm going to walk you through what, what happens, but when they click on it, you've got somebody on the phone pay per click is just a click they have a click to a page home advisor you have you you get the, the hey somebody is interested in a lead go chase them now you now have to try and get them on the phone and if you've ever used um, um home advisor or services like that you know how hard that is this is actually a live person on the phone going i'm interested in what you offer tell me more right that is an actual real lead and that's why the rois can be amazing with with, with google local service ads so what we're looking at here is you notice that there's a couple things we're going to talk about. So the Google Guarantee Badge, we'll talk about that later as well. But that, that's really important as what that means. And the Google Tracking Number. So the Google Tracking Number means that Google puts their own number in there. All the calls are recorded. Their AI bot is actually listening to all the calls as well. And you can actually, because they're all, all recorded, you can dispute a call, and we'll talk about that, how to do that properly, and you should be, you you can dispute a call that is billed to you as a lead, and the, they will, Google will go back and listen to that call, and, and and they will mark it as, um you know, you're right, that was, if it's in the disputable category, and we'll talk about that, any one of those, they're gonna mark it as, um, as not a lead and, and take that charge off your account. So you will no longer, you won't be charged for that lead. And, and that's really, really important. So Google's tracking the calls, but we're also finding that their AI bot is getting so good at this that, um, that a lot of leads are actually marked as already marked as spam by the time, um, or, you know, or as, as, as not charged by the time you see them. And they're marked that way because the AI is actually listening to the call and understands that it wasn't a booked appointment. And they're only charging you for booked appointments, they're not charging you for the phone call. They're only charging for the booked appointment. So that's, that's really important as well. So let's, let's, um, pile through this. So, um, the other point here is that, Obviously, when somebody clicks on the actual one of the, the, the cards, so say, for example, they click on this um, team carpet and flooring, then there's going to be a, um, it's, it doesn't go to your website. It doesn't go to some, you know, some other weird place. It goes to a landing page that Google builds that, that you, that you um, can set up. And we'll show you how to set it up in the ways that, that make it way more likely that people are going to call you and become a lead to you, right? But so they click on that, you haven't paid anything yet. They get to here, they haven't paid anything yet. Now, if they call your business and are a qualified lead, then then you're going to be paying per lead, right? So here's what we're, like, what we're talking about is your Google Guarantee shows up right here. Um, we also see all of your reviews and we're gonna talk about how much that influences what's happening as well. So there's ways to influence what this card is, but this is what happens at this moment. 
So why does it matter? Well, it matters because 87% of consumers go to Google for their home service providers. And we're in the home service industry. So if they don't already have a preferred vendor or a referral from somebody, if they've, if they've got a referral, they went at, like ask then buy, as they say, they ask their friends, they ask on social media, they might go and start Google your name and those kinds of things. Google local service ads aren't gonna show up then. But if they're just Googling the category, they're trying to find a carpet cleaner near me, a tile and grout cleaner near me, upholstery cleaner near me, things like that. Um, they're going to see those ads at the top. 87% of people go to Google, and that's really, really important. Um, it's the number one place new, play, new, um, new customers are looking for service is Google, so the Google search results, and page one of Google specifically. So page one of Google includes the local service ads. Um, local service ads come up first on both mobile and desktop. Um, what you're trying to do and what Google is influencing, Google's only showing the Google local service ads to people have, who have consumer intent. So they're actually using keywords and sentiment that Google's algorithm knows is that they're in a buying mode. So Google only cares to show the local service ads to people that have buying intent based on, on what they're searching for. So there's no higher intent than a customer who is proactively looking for your services at the moment with buying keywords. So you need to just have a plan in place to win and you're, you're, you're tapping into this really, really nice stream. So how does it impact on search? So what we talked about is this is, you, you need to own the page, right? Studies that have been done, they know that when shown on a page, so you got the local, local service ad, then you got the AdWords, the pay-per-click right there. And then you've got the, we all know about the trusty old maps pack and then you've got the organic listings where the websites go right we know that 14 percent of the clicks go to google local service ads on average 11 percent then when google local or service ads are shown 11 percent go to the pay-per-click ads 35 percent go to the um google maps listing Google Business Profile, as it's called, and a full 40% go down into where the websites are, the organic SEO stuff. That's the breakdown of average click volume um, found in the home service category, carpet cleaning category. 14% is still a tremendous opportunity. And as we said, as I said earlier, the goal is always to maximize your opportunity to get phone calls and leads from your from the source from this source is Google how do you maximize the opportunity well the app ma the way to maximize the opportunity to get phone calls and leads from Google is that you understand that each of these areas is an opportunity you don't just look at this and go ah 40% all I'm going to worry about is SEO at ah, 35% all I'm going to worry about is Google Maps now 11% I'm just going to worry about pay-per-click 14% I'm just going to worry about local service ads Every one of them is an opportunity. Every one of them is an ability for you to influence and get all of these working for you. So I need you to think about that in your, in your, as you're managing your business. What are all the opportunities to get leads? We're talking about Google today, but what are all the opportunities to get leads in your business and are you maximizing all of them, right? So how do you get set up? That's the next step. Um, you must complete a local service application. So something we can help you with, again, if you're one of our clients, we, we, we help with this kind of stuff. Um, they're gonna run a background check um, on you and your employees. Um, they're gonna make sure that you've got um, your business insurances in place and all of that kind of stuff. And there, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna show you in the next screen a little bit about what they're gonna do. But they're gonna run a check to make sure you're verified. Why? Because Google is gonna guarantee your services. That's that check mark right here. It's, it's Google Guarantee, some people call it so Google Local Service Ads, Google Guarantee, those names are kind of interchangeable. Um, once approved um, and active in your area, you'll only pay on a lead basis. What we've seen is the leads average usually between sort of 20, 25, and $45 a lead, depending on the size of your market, um, but expect those to shift over time. Expect this to be the early days of Google local service ads, and the, the cost per lead is gonna go higher as more and more people bid on it and as just as costs go up for everything. Um, the price will vary by city, by the service type. Um, so there's different services that you can, that, that you can 
suggest or like that are in our carpet cleaning category services that you can say yes i do those please make my ad show for those as well and then the different types phone versus chat or both there is an opportunity to take chat leads as well not just phone leads right through the google local service um ads platform so we've seen them come to as low as like 15 bucks um, for a chat lead in a small market. And we've seen higher than 45 for some of our clients in high markets with high volume for phone messages on core services. So just, you know, Google will let you know what range you're gonna be in when you set up and then you run your budget. We'll talk about how to maximize your budget to get the most amount of leads. But the requirements to get improved, you do need proof of insurance. Um, so you have to be a legitimate business with um, at least a million dollar liability insurance. That's the current, unless they've changed it. Um, you need the background check. You need to have customer reviews. So if you don't have customer reviews, get them. Like that's that that's requirement for your business right now anyways. The number of view, reviews you need kind of um, is dependent on your marketplace and stuff like that and the services, but you definitely need to have customer reviews that are gonna be pulled over into Google Local Service. Um, you need to have a budget. Um, and then you need to provide your billing information. So, um, so once you pass those criteria, um, we're going to talk about you're going to need to set your weekly budget. Um, so, Google bases it all on your weekly budget. So, if we do some, um, and it's going to determine the maximum amount of leads you're going to get that week, right? So, say for example, let's just do some simple math. Say you want to spend a thousand dollars a month towards these leads. That is roughly a $250 per week budget, right? And we know there's you know a couple extra days over over 28 days in a month, but that's that's roughly $250 a week, which is on a five-day work schedule. And I'll talk about why the number of days that you're running your ads is important as well. That's $50 a day, um, and we know that the average cost per lead is about $25. So you're gonna you know you could get 40 leads a month with that budget. You'll pay for them because you're only paying per lead, which is 10 leads a week which is two leads a day. So if Google can maximize your budget at $250 a week, um, then you'll get two leads a day. Now it won't be the consistently two leads today, two leads tomorrow. Google kind of blends it over the month, or over, sorry, over the week based on their own algorithm and the budgets and stuff like that. But that would be the goal. And once your weekly budget is spent, it turns you off. You're completely offline. So I want to give you a secret tip right here that we do um, with, with our clients and, and one that we strongly, strongly suggest our clients do. Um, we recommend that you set your monthly budget as your weekly budget. Because what this does is this tells the Google algorithm you are willing to take as many leads as they can give you. It'll never spend all of it. There is never going to be that many leads in your marketplace clicking there. And by the way, there's only three ads showing up and we'll talk about that, but there could be dozens and dozens and dozens of people, um, other businesses that are trying to influence those top three ads. And we'll show you how to do that. So the chances of you spending the whole budget, very slim, but say for example, there isn't some sort of um, an event, some sort of thing happening um, you're not aware of, even just the back to school rush or the just before the holidays rush, things like that, and you have that budget, you always have the ability to go in and pause your ads, dial the budget down, turn it off for a while. So if you can't take any more leads right now or you can't effectively take leads that can convert right now, talk about that in a minute as well, then yeah, you can always adjust your budget. You could go in there every single day and play with this. It's not that hard. So if you set your your monthly budget as your weekly budget and then monitor it, you're gonna get the maximum amount of leads and you're gonna monitor the conversions of those right within the dashboard. And we'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so you can scale back as you need um, um, if you max out on your budget or you max out on the number of bookings you can take and things like that, you can just scale back. So plan to, you know, plan to set it that way and then monitor it and you're going to maximize. That's one tip that a lot of companies um, who help manage this for you don't know and what a lot of, you know, um, a lot of um, carpet cleaners just would never have thought of. Um, so again, you may get a different number of leads from day to day, but you'll never spend more than your budget. Um, you also have the ability to immediately dispute a lead if you receive a lead and it's not valid. You get a phone call, um, it's not a valid lead. You can go right in there and dispute it. Um, the algorithm may have already picked it up, but otherwise, um, and we'll talk about what leads can be disputed here next, but um, you can dispute it right away and then that charge will not go against you and your budget stays wide open. So what leads can you dispute? Let's take a look at that. So you can dispute any leads that are solicitation. So 
normally, again, the algorithm is getting really good at picking these up, but somebody trying to sell you something, somebody trying to get a, find a job, um, you know, things like that, you know, the caller d did not discuss the business services that you offer. It is just a solicitation ad, you know, entire Yelp is calling you to try and get you on their platform, you name all those kinds of things. Um, you can dispute those, calls from the wrong number is basically what you're thinking of, or calling you have nothing to do with trying to buy your services. Spam calls, so any call that was pre-recorded or anything like that, anything that's not a live human, totally disputable, doesn't happen at all. Um, your location not served. So um, this is another, so if, if you set the ads to the location you're willing to take jobs from, and we always set, set it as large as you can and work your way backwards, dial it in tighter if you need to afterwards. Um, we'll talk about sort of how, how often you show up and where you show up in a second, but it's a good idea just to start with a larger, a larger swath to your serve that make sure it's your service area, but you know, kind of, kind of go wide if you can first and worry about that. But if this is somebody who's calling from outside your service area entirely, Google shouldn't be showing those ads to them. And if they just happen across it, say they're sitting at their office in your service area, but their home is outside of the service area. Um, you didn't book it, but make sure you have all of your scripts. Like you, when you're booking somebody, you have to have booking scripts. Everybody needs to know they're asking the right questions, whoever is answering your phone, because one of those questions is um, asking them where they're, you know, where they're located and to confirm that they're within the service area. If you're asking those questions in your script and you find out they're not in the service area, then it's obvious that, um, that you can't help them. Well, that's one that you can dispute because it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be in the service area you've set up in the Google local service ads as well. So um, basically the rule of thumb, write this down, if you book the job on the phone, Google will charge you and you will not get your money back regardless of how you dispute it. If, you, if the end result was you booked the customer in, that's on you. So even if the, it turns out not to become a job, that's on you. Right, the booking is what they, they is 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 what Google is matching the dispute on, right? And if the services are not offered, so if you've got um, the caller is looking for a service that you do not provide and you have not set up as the, one of the services in your Google local service ads, um, then it wasn't listed in your profile, um, and you decline the job, and you decline the job, you you can dispute that one right away, and you will not be charged for that 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 booking. So it's really good to know. So what we've found from feedback from, from active carpet cleaners that are using these uh, Google local service ads, um, the, the, it's the lower cost per click than pay-per-click. Doesn't mean you should not do pay-per-click, but you can actually get, uh, or sorry, lower cost per lead than pay-per-click. So pay-per-click, again, as I said, you've got to influence the click, get, and you're pay. You instantly pay. How many of those clicks need to come to your landing page before somebody decides to fill out a form, answer your, your chat to a chat, or pick up the phone and call you. How many of those leads do you need to get before that? So even if it's $5 a lead, but you need 10 of them, that's $50 before you even get somebody on the phone. That $50 versus um, Google's paper lead at $25. And then we know from both of them, what's your booking percentage? Well, your booking percentage tends to be higher, they're higher quality leads than Home Advisor. They tend to even be higher quality leads than, than many other sources. There's more likely they're going to book with you. Um, you still get some price shoppers, but what we find is there's less price shoppers. Here's something to really understand. All consumer data, consumer studies show that 20% of consumers are price shoppers. 80% of consumers are not price shoppers. So if you could influence the right elements to convert them into a customer for you, that is outside of price. If everything you do is market your price, your price, your price, you're the cheapest price, you're a low price, you got discounts, you got savings, your price, 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 and you tell me, no, no, John, every customer is a price shopper. Look in the mirror. That is on you and on your marketing because you're only attracting the 20% of the marketplace that are price shoppers. 80% of the marketplace is looking for something outside of price. They want, it's, it's, gotta, it's gotta be fair value, but they're looking for results and quality and guarantees and, and person, you know, somebody they can trust. They're looking for how soon you can get there. They're looking for how quickly it dries. They're looking for how healthy it is for their home. They're looking for something other than price. So, and what we found from our users is, uh, all, again, from all the active users um, that, that we have, we 
know amongst our clientele and ones that we've talked to and stuff like that is it's a really solid or solid ROI for right now. I'll say that again. It's a solid ROI right now because right now we're still in the early days. It hasn't taken off to the point where the cost per lead is much higher and maybe when it gets higher, you're, you're going to have to really consider the ROI. You're going to have to really do your math and you're going to really have to consider your, your phone answering, your conversion tactics, everything that you do to land them as a customer so that you can maximize that because the ones that don't will not be using Google local service ads in the future because they'll just be too expensive at some point. So why is this a no brainer for most carpet cleaners? You show up at the top of the results. You only pay on a lead basis. The cost is lower than pay per click, much higher quality um, leads than places like Home Advisor and Angie's List and Bark and Thumbtack and all that kind of stuff. And you're able to modify your budget based on your schedule, increase and decrease it based on 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 your um, uh, the, your, your again your budget on on the on the schedule that you uh, you have set. One of the things in our industry, um, just keep this in mind as well. If you're taking bookings right now in your current business for two to three weeks out, right? You probably shouldn't be running Google local service ads. They're going to want to have a booking within the next couple of days at the most. And you're going to notice your booking percentage drop. And when your booking percentage drops, I'm going to show you how Google is going to actually affect where you show up. So your booking percentage drops. You don't, you don't appear as often as well. And there's a reason for that. And we'll kind of get into that. But you want to make sure that you, you have capacity. So adding extra cleaners, adding extra time. There's ways to modify capacity in our industry. If you've got three crews on the road, maybe you have one crew that runs from um, 7 to 3 p.m. And you got another crew that maybe starts at um, you know, 10 or 11 and runs right through to 7 at night, for example. Um, now you've got broader capacity to help people out as well. And you could get ways, you got a floating crew that, that bounces in between. You got, you know, employees that can be off on certain days of the week so that you got Saturdays covered and things like that. There's ways to sort of modify your capacity so that you can be booked out for core jobs and repeat customers that don't care about the timing. If they really don't care how quickly, put them farther away so you always have openings earlier. Um, and then you can bump, bump people up. If you've got a gap in your schedule, just call somebody and say, hey, I noticed you wanted something a little bit sooner. Can we bump you up? But this will fill those gaps. So plan to have gaps filled using a service like this. Okay, so now that you got the whole strategy around it, how do you get set up? So if you're one of our clients, if you work with us, let us support you. Let us help you get this set up. It's, it's something that we can help you with. Um, for some of our packages, it's, inclu it's included. If you're looking to do this, we'll help you. Other packages, it's a very modest one-time fee to help you get set up. And if you do need us to sort of manage the back end for you, we prefer you do. But if you do need, um, there's a very modest charge for, for our team to be in there every single day and connecting with you to confirm some details and things like that. But you can work with us. And for a lot of it, it's, it's, it's included. But for those that don't, really simple, you're going to go to ads.google.com. That's now it's run by Google Ads. It's ads.google.com, local service ads. Now, some of you guys are driving. I heard somebody mention in the chat that you're driving. Um, you know, you don't need to write this down if you don't want. The other option you can is just Google. You'll go to Google and type in local service ads. Click that link. That's the link, right? So nothing fancy here. That's just, you know, that's not a magic tip. Just, just Google it. Um, that's how you're going to get in there. Okay. So once you're in there, what's going to happen? What are, what are we doing here? So um, basically, when you start setting it up, it's going to walk you through the checklist of eligibility requirements. And what you do want to do is you want to make sure that you connect this to your Google business profile. It used to be called Google My Business. You Google Maps, right? Because the reviews over there are going to be pulled into your, your, your Google local service ad dashboard. So all of your re reviews over there are going to be pulled in. We have seen it where some people have been set up by other agencies and the account setup is brand new, even though they might have 200 reviews, 150 reviews on their Google local service ads. They've got, or on their Google, Google My Business, Google Business Profile, they've got three in their local service ads. That's just a bad setup. Um, so you, what you want to do is you want to make sure if that's you, that you get on the horn with um, a Google representative and get them to help you connect those two. Because now after the fact, it's much more difficult to connect the two. But you want to connect that right away. Now, what we do notice is that some people start questioning, well, after a period of time, how come I've got more reviews on my Google local service ads 
than I have in my Google business profile. You know, I've got 232 reviews in my Google um, business profile and I've got 250 in my Google local service ads. How does that happen? Well, it's because Google local service ads, you can, you, you want to get reviews directly there from verified um, customers. So once they have booked, you've, you've marked them as booked. You've told Google that you booked the job and I'll show you where you do that. And that's really important that you do that. Um, now you can request reviews from these people. Now they're considered a verified customer, just like on Amazon when, when you guys go and buy my book, for example, uh, or the Kindle version, but the physical copy is good. You can make notes in it. You go and buy that. I'd love to get a review on it from you guys. You're gonna get a request from Amazon as a verified purchaser and those reviews are way more important than just anybody who decides to write a review on something. So same thing with Google, you just have to initiate it. So just so you know that as well. So you're gonna fill out the profile, pretty simple. Just walk through the steps. Um, now let's let's talk about how the rankings work because this is really, really the, the critical part here um, because there is only three listings that show at the top. And so why is Google showing that before you click that more button? There's nothing to scroll, it's three listings. How does Google pick that? Well, one of the things is Google local service ads has advantages and disadvantages, right? There's some advantages and disadvantages, like only three showing, um, that's a disadvantage, and you, 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 and the advantage is you, get a, you can get a lot of leads if you know how to influence that. Google business profile has advantages and disadvantages. Google pay-per-click has advantages and disadvantages. Your website organic rankings has advantages and dis disadvantages. Not any one of them is the full solution for, for maximizing Google as one of your lead sources. Google's a great lead source. It's one of your most important ones. It's not your only one, but it's one of your most important ones. But not any one of these platforms or these parts of Google is the full solution to maximize your leads from Google. But all together, they can provide amazing results. Are you doing SEO to rank organically for all of your keywords, hundreds and hundreds of them? Are you ranking in the maps for all of your services in the top three? Are you, are you in Google pay-per-click for areas outside of your Google Maps listing? Are you in Google local service ads for areas in and outside of your Maps listing? Are you maximizing all of them, right? So just keep that in mind as we're, as we're kind of going through there because only three spots as we mentioned and Google's algorithm is running in the background um, and there may be anywhere from 20 to hundreds of other carpet cleaners trying to influence those three. So what is it, what does Google base that on? How do you get yours to show up more often than anybody else's. Well, one of them is proximity, right? So all things being equal, where the, the searcher is searching from and where you are matters. So sure, you might want to be in the Google local service ads two or three towns away. But if Google knows that your location is back here and there's somebody closer, the proximity filter is going to, it doesn't mean you're never going to show up, but it's going to be less often and hard. So keep that in mind that, you know, again, the wider you stretch it too far, the proximity filter is going to be uh, an issue, but you can influence that with other things like your review score and the number of reviews you receive. So again, what, how many reviews do you have that came from your Google business profile? That's taken into account. How many legitimate verified reviews do you have from within Google local service ads. Have you been getting people? Because you think of that process um, where you've got somebody who who booked through you, like they, they Google's tracked all of that all the way through and they gave you a review. That is, that is insanely valuable to the algorithm as well. And that's gonna have you showing up more. This is, a, this is the, one of the most important ones to your entire business, but Google knows it well enough that, that it, inf it impacts the, um, the rankings your responsiveness to customers, inquiries, and requests. Basically, do you answer the phone? Are you gonna let it go to voicemail and call them back later? Like when any customer calls, I don't care if it's midday on a Thursday and they came from a Facebook ad. I don't care if your neighbor's friend's brother's sister handed over your referral card and they called from there. Are you answering the phone? Google cares about that. If you don't answer the calls, and remember, Google puts a tracking number in, in place. You can't get rid of that. That is how it works. They're verifying that you're a legitimate business that knows how to run a business because they want their customers, the Google search person, the individual, to be so happy with them to come back and use Google again. So they're tracking all of this. So your responsiveness, are you answering the calls? If you answer those phone calls, every single one of them, um, then 
Google is is going to reward you for that. If you man answer those chats within one minute, right? Treat the chat like a phone call. Somebody chats, you answer right back. You should be doing that with your website and your forms and your emails, but you definitely need to do that with Google. Um, your business hours then really matter. You're not wanting the ads to run 24 seven. Are you really gonna answer the phone at 2 a.m. to book a carpet cleaning job? I don't think so. So only run the ads when somebody is available to answer your phone. So if you've got an overflow call center answering your phones on Saturdays and Sundays, yeah, sure, run the ads. If they're not and they're not doing a, or you don't, they're not doing a good job, anything like that, do not run the ads. If you're using a call center, make sure that they, that, that you're connecting the dots or they are connected, somebody's connecting the dots between this was a Google local service ad call so that they can market if they book it, right? Because somebody's got a market book. And when you go to market book, we'll talk about that as well, when you should do that. Um, if you start getting serious or repeat complaints about your business, this is where Google Guarantee jumps in. So Google guarantees up to $2,000 money back to the customer if they file a serious complaint. There's bells, there's hoops they have to jump through, but if they file a serious complaint and a dispute, Google guarantees to give their money back from Google. You bet your bottom dollar that if you have serious complaints, um, and money given back from Google, or you're getting a ton of complaints through your service, they're not gonna be showing your ad because they're not stupid. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, in addition to those ranking factors, Google will attempt to spread the leads out um, um, over time, right? So basically, they don't wanna spend your entire budget too early. That's why I suggest that you, you put your monthly budget as your weekly budget and manage it that way. And you work on pausing ads temporarily, um, things like that, because you know if you've got more than enough leads to handle and you, you don't have capacity to book another job for the next two weeks, pause the ads. Like that's, that's just smart business. Hire somebody else in your business to help, you know, to help do the job. Ask your employees to, to, to work overtime an extra two hours a day so you can build some more capacity. Do something, but you don't want to be running, running the ads when you can't meet them. Um, so again, Google's trying to spread that budget out. So maximize your budget is a, is a really core strategy, but make sure you're, you're um, understanding how they're actually doing that as well. And that's all part of the rankings. So think of it, for example, if Google knows that you only have $50 a day, um, and your average um, lead is 25 bucks, obviously Google's gonna try and spread that out. It, it's, it's not a day-by-day -day basis, they do on the weekly, but if they got you three leads yesterday, they might pause it for a, a couple days themselves. They're not show your ad as often for a couple days to catch up so that they don't overspend your budget. So the algorithm is very intelligent that way. Okay, so now let's get into the, the nitty gritty and the dirt, um, um, the dirty down details as I like to call it. So how are we gonna win? Right, so we're gonna do a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go through each one of these individually. We're gonna dial in your service area profile and budget. Talked a little bit about that, let's get let's go deep on that. You're gonna mark your jobs as booked. I've alluded to that, that's really important. We're gonna deal just with disputes properly, I'll show you that. You're gonna drive verified reviews and you're gonna target an 85% booking rate. So if you're used to people calling your business, messaging your business, you know, all that kind of stuff, and out of you know every 100 leads, you get 50 of them as clients, or 25 of them as clients, 40 of them as clients, go back and check your numbers. That's your booking rate. On Google, local service ads, you want to hit 85% because they're more qualified. So the way you do that is by having appointments available and a bunch of other stuff I'm going to teach you right here. So the first one is dialing in your profile. So this is what your profile is going to look like, kind of back behind here. Um, and you get to turn on and off certain things to make you what you're you get to kind of adjust. It's really simple. You get to adjust what, what shows up on the screen a little bit, but you want to dial in your profile. But what are the keys to dialing in your profile? So you want to set your budget, open it up to have capacity, really important. Um, these are very cost-effective leads. You want to update your schedule. Make sure that, again, only when somebody's available to answer the phone and only when you have the ability to book people in within the next couple of days that you're, you're, um, you're showing that as well. You want to set up your business bio properly. So you want to turn on and off those things that really accentuate your business. Um, fill in the information when you're setting it up. You want to set up a very, very um, attractive, personable bio. Um, you want to select the type of jobs that you want. 
So you don't, you, you're going to pick the services that you want Google lo local service ads to show your ad for. So in the carpet cleaning category, it can show for a bunch of different things. If you don't want upholstery cleaning jobs, don't tick it off. If you don't want, you know, area cleaning jobs, don't tick it off. Um, you want to make sure that you're targeting the types of service. You don't, you're, you don't want car commercial carpet cleaning, don't tick it like manage the types of services that you want so that you're you you got it really really well honed in set up your service area as i said i suggest start wide target it down a little bit the wider you go the less you're going to show anyways but if you take jobs out there might as well have it showing up there update your business hours um and this is killer right here add lots of photos personality you want photos of your team doing the job. You want photos of your team with the truck. You want photos of yourself. You want to photo, you know, you want photos of your customers standing beside you. You want like anything you can do before and after pictures. You want to load your profile up with very engaging photos, real photos, no stock photos of you doing the job. You want to make sure that they understand when they see those photos, oh, this is what it's going to be like for me to get this service in my house. You want them to see themselves in the job. That's a Dan Kennedy marketing strategy 101. Whenever you're writing co sales copy, whenever whenever you're you're doing any marketing, you want the customer the, the lead, the potential customer to see themselves already using your services. And that really really happens with good good images. And most of the businesses that we see, their profiles the first time have not done a good job on that. And that is one of those conversion factors that is going to cause help you get to that 85%. Next one is you want to mark all the jobs that are booked as booked. Why do you want to do this? This is extremely important. You want to tell Google that you are the right business for them to show. Somebody clicked the ad, picked up the phone, called you or messaged you if you have that turned on, and, and they booked. And you're telling Google every single time that they booked. So now Google goes, oh, I need to show these guys more. They are the type of business and, and profile and company, and they provide the type of services that consume, our consumers want. Let's show them more often because that's a good, um, that's a, a good experience for the Google user. And that's all Google cares about. They don't care about you. They care about a good experience for the Google user. Um, so again, so you want to you wanna mark them as booked scheduled you want to add the customer details add in include their email address add all that information that you can into the back end let google know that you're responsive you add, answer the phones right away you book the job and anybody that is non-converted opportunity archive them so what that means is you book them they booked on the call you know they're booked they're marked as booked and then say for for some reason the job got canceled it didn't show up didn't happen again that's on you um, doesn't happen very often, but that's on you to to can qualify that booking and and then keep that appointment. If they didn't stick, which happens in our business, we know that, just mark them, archive them, because that helps Google's algorithm as well. That lets them know that you're very responsive and you know what you're doing. You want to deal with disputes right away. So you won't be charged, as we talked about, for disqualified leads. So leads outside of your area, we talked about this, um, not the services you provide, all that kind of stuff. You just want to go in and mark them in, in, let me go back here for a second. I think it's on this slide. Yeah, the three little dots show up over here on the lead. So anytime there's a lead, it's right in the back end and you can mark as booked, you can archive, or you can deal it right here, dispute the lead and dispute it on one of those, those the grounds that Google allows. You dispute it, you won't be charged for it, and it also helps maximize your budget, maximize your listings, everything. And you want to drive verified reviews right from users of your carpet cleaning business into the back end of your um, Google local service ads. So this is what we call closing the loop. So think of it from, from, from Google's perspective. They have the call tracking number. What they know is you answered the phone within a few rings every time. You marked the lead as booked. 85% of the time, you requested a review from those verified jobs that have now been complete. Now they know you've completed the job because you're requesting a review. And then the customer left you a five-star review. All of that is done within your local service ads dashboard. This is huge. This is closing the loop on Google. This is teaching their algorithm 
to be pick you as one of the top three over everybody else. So as you can tell, it's not just about reviews. It's not like, hey, this guy's got, you know, this guy's got, um, you know, whatever this guy on his Google local profile, Google business profile, he's got 300 reviews and you've got a hundred. It's not about that. It's about closing the loop within the Google local service ad environment as well. So if you can do that, you're winning. Right? So what it looks like, if you look at it here, again, this for this carpet cleaning company right here, they, you know, asked for, um, for reviews. They, and those are the ones pending right now. And look at right here. Google verified job. This, these ones are for plumbing as an example. And this one, actually, the, the, the pop of the drop down. But this is, you know, this was one type of job. This was a verified another type of job. This is another type of job. So the person clicked on what type of job they wanted in carpet cleaning. These are going to be carpet cleaning and going to be um, upholstery cleaning. And they're going to be other, other types of services, the list of services you turned on. So you're going to verified reviews based on the type of jobs that, you're, um, that, that the people have booked with. And that is very, very critical to the other people reading. They know what type of work you did and, um, and they know it's a verified purchaser as well. So the last one here, here is, um, is, is, again, what we're talking about is targeting that 85% booking rate. How do we know that, making, um, that, that, that marking the leads as booked is important? We know it's important that you mark the leads as booked because Google is actually tracking it in their dashboard. And they're telling you that the, the booking percentage as well. This customer, this company here has got a 56% booking rate. You really want to target 85% by all of that, those suggestions I gave you, making sure that you've got the time of days right, making sure you've got all of the other things right um, in your setup and that you've got openings in your schedule and all of that kind of stuff because if you can if you can start getting to that 85 percent booking rate um you are really influencing google's algorithm and we know it's important because google's tracking it. anything google's tracks is important period all right so recap how do we increase the lead flow from lo local service ads open up your budget um you want to expand um, your services, job types, ad schedule, business app. You want to make sure that all of that's available. That's that's how you can increase it by expanding your business hours. Again, having overflow technicians, things like that. You want to close out every lead as booked, scheduled, archived. Um, and you want to request re reviews from every lead. That is how you increase your lead flow. Okay, so what do we do now? Um, so if you're one of our clients, get with, get with your strategy partner um, on our team. Um, and let's get this set up for you. If you're not, go get signed up right now. Start completing your background checks. It takes a while. Um, put this in place and start gauging your ROI. You know which customers these are. You know how many dollars they paid after, the, after it's done. You can run the reports. Determine how much did you spend, how much did you make, what is the return on investment. Easy, easy math to do. Um, be sure that you leverage the platform to close the most amount of jobs possible. All the strategies that we just suggested here today, make sure you're employing all of them. Just be active. It's a really good lead source right now, but play the game as long as the ROI makes sense. Right now, you're building customers. The whole idea in carpet cleaning, as you know, if you run discount ads all over the place, you get discount customers, then you have to constantly be chasing for new discount customers, new discount customers every time. You might get the same customer back if your discount is as good as, as they want to see it, or they might go to somebody else because they only care about price. The game in carpet cleaning to build something that can sell for half a million, three million, uh, or half a million, three quarters of a million, a million dollars and plus, um, the way you build an asset value to your company is building a database that doesn't go back to the well every single time and find somebody else. They only use you, right? So the lifetime value of your client, that is the most important. So what is the ROI from this lead source? And what is the average size of your job? Are you between that three and $400 average job? Or are you 200 to 300? Or are you, are you somewhere between 100 and 200? All of that determines how you play the game of running a carpet cleaning business in the first place. If you're constantly buying leads, um, from and that's it. That's your only only game. Then you're going to be chasing, you know, chasing an uphill battle for years. If you're building value and you're going back to that customer again and again and again, and the average lifetime value of your client is three, four, five thousand dollars, and you run that math, we can show you how to run that math. Um, then yeah, does it does it matter that you spent fifty dollars to land them if the average lifetime value is five thousand dollars? That's an entirely different conversation and a different business than if your average customer only shows up once and the average lifetime value is 150 bucks. Did you spend 50 for a 
uh, customer, you're going to go to business pretty quick. So um, anyways, so put in the chat here, um, will you make money? Is this something that you understand? Can you attract more leads and grow your business if you maximize Google local service business ads as one of the lead flow programs that you put in place, one of the marketing programs you put in place for your business? Just put a one in the chat. I'm going to pop back over the chat. Um, put a one in the chat if you think that you can, uh, you, that this can make you money. Cool, cool, cool. We got a couple ones coming in already. Hey, the rest of you, you know, wake up a little bit. Sorry, I, I know I've been talking for a little while here, um, but we're going to wrap this up. So definitely make sure that you're considering these types of things. If local service ads are running for your business and your category, then jump on it. Give it a try. Run the math. Make sure it makes sense for you and make sure your business is structured in a way that it does make sense. It is just one of the pieces. It's part of this right here. Google local service ads. It's just one of the pieces of a proper, doo -doo -doo -doo, terrible circle there, guys, um, um, digital dominance method. It's one of those three core elements. Your goal is to maximize the opportunity to get phone calls and leads. So each of these areas is an opportunity and you want to be using all of them. You want to be maximizing, obviously, all of your opportunities. You want to be maximizing your brand impressions as we talk about, that is, and which is your brand authority and visibility. You want to make sure that that's being seen everywhere um, so you've got all of this good stuff in place. And then you want to be able to make sure you're maximizing your conversions. So you want to have all of those conversion boosters in place. We talked a whole bunch about a whole bunch of them here for Google local service ads. Um, but there's the conversion boosters for your website, personality on your website, having calls to action on your website, um, all of those kinds of things. There's ways to make your website work better than others. Having your phone number in the top right corner, something as simple as that can help. You want to have, you want to make sure you're, you have conversion maximizers on all of your social media. What what's your cover graphic look like on on your Facebook and on your YouTube? Is it does it got calls to action? Is it influencing people to want to choose you? Is it building your reputation um, so that your brand authority and visibility is is growing? Things like that. That is a conversion multiplier. So you want to be multiplying your conversions everywhere you can as that third core principle of creating a dominant marketing plan and making sure that you are the top provider in your marketplace. Cool, cool, cool. So if that makes sense, um, then what we do is we, we invite you to jump on a call. So if there's something that we can help you with, um, we offer a comprehensive audit. Currently right now, this, this will go away uh, at some point, um, but right now for a limited time, a few of these a month, we offer a comprehensive marketing audit where you hop on a call with Rima, you give some information, our research team goes to work, looks at all of your stuff, does a whole bunch of metrics on you, does a whole bunch of metrics on your competitors, sees where you're winning, where, you're, where you've got some opportunities to grow, and then you jump on a 60-minute marketing conversation consultation with me. And we go through the research, we give you a step-by-step -step plan, things that you should be implementing now, things that are going to help grow your business. So we identify the key issues, website ranking reports, website optimization tips, conversion tips, just we walk through all of it in 60 minutes. And all of that is available, and Rima's going to get mad at me again because I normally should put this in the chat way earlier. But in the chat is you can schedule a strategy session if that makes sense to you. So in the strategy, if you want to jump on a call with us, just schedule an appointment. Um, if you want to refer us, if you're one of our clients and you know a whole bunch of other people that should be using us as well, go tell them about us and refer them to to check out our stuff. Check out our podcast on iTunes and, and Spotify. Go check out the book um, on Amazon. Um, follow us on Instagram. We've got lots of content we give away for free all over the place. Follow us on these, these monthly uh, webinars. But let your friends know about us. Um, let's get them in the club here. And if, if you're not one of our clients, by all means, let's schedule some time and let's have a conversation. Let's get our team put to work for you. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate your time. And I'm glad we got this one in in just an hour. So <laughs> that's good for me. So take care. Love you all. Bye.